Sometimes you get to that point in a relationship where you just think, they don't deserve me. The Conservative Party risk exactly that with the British people, following yet another absurd soap opera, involve, a soap opera involving, you guessed it, Boris Johnson, a man who was put on this earth to make headlines. But it's all the wrong headlines. Right now, with the governing party in turmoil over an ex that they can't get over. But the bitter truth is it is the end of the affair. Divorce is pending, and it's time for both parties to split the CDs, arrange shared custody of the dog, and move on. But the Boris Spartans on those green backbenches didn't get the memo. What is the price they pay for their undying loyalty? A majority Labour government. Surely a threat that should unite all blues. It was the blues of Man City last night who came together to achieve footballing victory. But it seems the other Blues, the warring Tories, seek no trophy at all, just a dust-up in the dressing room. It's like they want to be out of the competition. The public will not take kindly to this growing farce as they struggle to put food on the table, get a GP appointment, pay their rent or mortgage, or fill the car with petrol. Nadine Dorries, Boris Johnson's wannabe girlfriend, is an example of someone more keen to settle scores than to score for her own party. In the end, they're all scoring an own goal. There's a growing sense now that the Tories don't deserve power, and most worryingly for their supporters, that they don't want it either, presumably punch drunk from the pandemic, the economic turmoil and the behind-the-scenes political drama. But like in a football match, it ain't over till the final whistle. And although the Conservatives' maverick striker has walked off the pitch, it's my unfashionable view that they have an excellent captain in Rishi Sunak, someone who knows how to defend and attack. The Tories are now a tainted brand, toxic even, but that doesn't make the alternative any better. There's no option on the voting slip for not the Tories. It's likely they will be dispatched from office in a year's time, and many would argue rightly so. But be careful what you wish for. Out of the frying pan, into the fire, with a Labour government that will be under pressure from supporters to fulfil the union's inflation-busting demands. They'll be under pressure to invest in every single government department. And remember, the term invest is just a snake oil word for more borrowed billions. They'll be under pressure from progressives in Islington, North London, to fold to the woke mob with more stifling political correctness, which is in infecting our public institutions and making life miserable for everyone. But no one is going to vote for a party that doesn't seem to want to be in power. That's like doing a tango with someone that doesn't want to dance. And to be fair to Labour, they look like they want power. They're hungry. They're out there selling their message. And I'm going to give Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, due credit for cancelling her plan to spaff £28 billion a year on a so-called Green Prosperity Plan, because she's realised, and probably been told by bigwigs in the city, that it's just not affordable. Fair play. Yes, it's a U-turn, but the message is clear. Labour are getting serious about government. As I said last night, since the removal of Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party has returned to some form of sanity, making the prospect of Prime Minister Starmer hardly palatable, but not terrifying either, which means it's all to play for. I personally think in our increasingly presidential system, if it's a choice between Sunak and Starmer, I think Sunak edges it as the superior CEO. Yes, he's richer than Switzerland and a more awkward public speaker than the Elephant Man, but he doesn't flip-flop like Starmer, and he knows what a woman is. And I would argue he has steadied the ship significantly since he arrived at number 10, identifying the five key issues facing the country, the NHS, illegal migrant crossings, economic growth, the debt and inflation. So those warring Tories must at last decide whose team they are on. Team Boris, which isn't even on the pitch, or Team Sunak, who currently has the ball and the balls. Boris got Brexit done. He kept Corbyn out of number 10 and he rightly sold a positive vision of Britain. But whether or not his dispatch from Parliament was politically motivated or not, 
whether it was fair or a miscarriage of justice, who the hell knows? It's actually irrelevant. His name has gone in the referee's book and he's walking down into the tunnel. So it's time to move on from Boris Johnson, whose time has come and gone. He's old news. He's out of the squad, he's off the pitch, and he's taken an early bath. Starmer versus Sunak is match of the day.